Uh, people think that, uh, you know, I've lost my morals. I'm a little bit uh, foolish. Uh, people think that I'm naive. Or they think that I've become a religious uh, fundamentalist. And that's the doom, of course, that uh, devotees tell me they are being uh, subject to. But now uh, that uh, religion itself has become a uh, display of appeal. Uh, not in America, of course, people still very much believe in God. But uh, in England and Sweden, it appears that you are considered to be a uh, more intelligent person if you don't believe in God. Or if you don't say that you follow any path of um, religion. Uh, spirituality, that's something else. You can say that you're a spiritual person. Um, you're okay. Uh, as long as you don't say anything too unusual. Uh, but if you say that you're a religious person, then people think that you are, you know, you've, you've lost something. You've lost part of your power of intellectual discretion. And so, uh, you know, this is the, the new accusation uh, again to vote that you fundamentalist uh, religious people, you, you know, you, you do things that will uh, make tantric beliefs that will possibly cause others harm. And, uh, of course, we have to undergo all these struggles. Uh, Madan Drapuri um, kind of summed it up, and uh, he said, that's all right. He said, that's all right. He said, this was 500 years ago. Yeah, Madan Drapuri said, uh, he said, my morning bath and the rituals, I, uh, I, I did with you. Uh, before, well, uh, demigods worship demigods for different uh, 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 rewards. I say goodbye to you, and he's on the same goodbye to all the uh, people and places and objects that he has held to be humbled in the past. And he goes on, he says, um, Let those people who are intellectuals say that I am uh, deceived. Let those people who think they are religious say that I am naive. Let those who are wealthy, um, uh, wealthy materialists, uh, let them say that I lost them. This is 500 years ago in India, the land of religion. And this is Adam Jokori, at one great uh, devotee of Krishna, and he's saying exactly the same problem. Even, uh, uh, he said, yes, let them say they're mad, let them say foolish, that I'm naive. And uh, there were others, I can't remember who he was saying. He said, uh, uh, let them say I've been from a uh, puffed up. Because as soon as you say, uh, if you say one instance of spirituality and I'm looking for the truth, everybody goes, oh, what a wonderful person, that's, that's a very good person to have. If you say I have found the truth, people go, uh, oh, how proud, how naive, oh, how puffed up you are, you've actually got something. And uh, it's a very strange thing that if you're in a group of friends and you say, well, you know, I keep an open mind and uh, I'm looking for spiritual ideas, yeah, I, I, spiritual ideas coming from all direction, and I think that's a good thing too. People go, oh, yeah, you're a very nice person who you really understand how religion is meant to be. I just keep an open mind. And, and then if you, um, if you tell people that they have found God or found a spiritual path that I'm to stick to and I'm actually flogging something, how will you can uh, It's a strange thing. I was looking for something and my friends praised me. But when I told them I'd found it, they said that I was foolish. And how do you deal with that um, situation? Uh, but we do, don't we? As a devotee, we do all the time. And uh, they say that, um, if you, uh, if you say that uh, you sometimes uh, speak to God, um, and people think you're um, a saintly person, you know, that they think you're a deeply religious person, that's, that's bad, okay, in some circumstances. Uh, but if you ever want to mention God speak to you, uh, they will uh, think you need a uh, psychiatrist. But we live in a very strange world where to say that you're uh, open about something is to be intelligent, to say that you actually found something means that you've lost all your intelligence. So um, we are dealing all the time with opposition. And sometimes the spiritual life means that I've brought upon me so much opposition, so much opposition. And um, it's very difficult to be a devotee amongst uh, demons as Brahmas is here. Uh, what Prabhupada, Prabhupada uses the word quite often demons. Uh, we normally think demons because some, someone who's been possessed uh, by a uh, devil, uh, some uh, you know, need of exorcism, um, uh, someone who does witchcraft and has gone wrong. Uh, but a demon actually means those who want to be uh, a law of material nature. We want to see the material world as a little more, as the end of everything. And if I just, uh, you know, manipulate my situation, like location here, a little manipulate in there, uh, perhaps a little longing to get by, uh, then I will get this, under it this. Um, Taste nectar, and other people that's a it's a yacht down in South France with you know a cocktail in one hand and you know the other hand you know in the water you know who knows what people have as their understanding of um taste of good life. Um, so everybody who does that it classifies uh, a demon. Of course, we don't go around uh, calling people this, but Krishna uh, says this for our understanding. If you live in this material world like that, then you can understand what it was for, which it was a, a reformer or a place. It's like a, a prison. Uh, when you go to prison, uh, you are uh, locked up. You can't get out, your freedom is taken away. If, however, uh, you uh, behave in such a way that meets with the approval of your authorities, then you are uh, let out or you can license. Um, so the mirror world is like that world of Maya, is a reformed to replace in which uh, we are being uh, tested to see if our behavior could be uh, to level by which it could be granted our mogda, our freedom. And so sometimes when a person has been in the prison for a long time, they become so accustomed to living there, they find it very difficult to um, think about life beyond prison. And sometimes prison officers uh, say that some. Um, uh, uh, an old person has uh, you know, gone out and he's, he's thrown bricks for a widow or he's done something. A lot of crime to get himself uh, back in prison. And uh, Prabhupada always used the prison line for the, uh, the, the world of the centers. Uh, we are, you know, we're trapped and we become so accustomed that we can't think of living anywhere else. And um, sometimes we do things that will get us back in prison again. And so part of the information that Krishna gives to us through Bhagavad Gita, through the Puranas, through the great sages, the Upanishads, uh, is that it's a temporary place. And it's like suffering. It's Dupalyam, Akashatam. Temporary and it's all of suffering. Um, so you can't make your home here. This is the point you cannot make your home here. Um, although, obviously, we do have a, we have a house, we have a garden, we have a, a job, a career, and we have family, friends. Um, still, we shouldn't understand these things in And this is what I meant by coming out of the light in the darkness, because then that information itself gives us a little bit of pain. It's painful to know that we will be separated from those we love, that I will be separated from everything that I've 
and that builds up in his life. Unless we come to that information, uh, then we're left in a situation where um, sort of Christian cultures were also drawing a great deal of pleasure from uh, the world around us. And this is to be ultimately uh, we've seen ourselves off this. Um, there are sometimes realities. And so once we confront these, which is a frightening part of spiritual life, we'll be, if we come through that more well now, we to face that neck that, we're, uh, that we are uh, always looking for. Someone, someone was uh, within uh, uh, the dog within uh, Los Angeles, and uh, it was a little boat, and uh, it was an earthquake. And we came back to England, he was telling us what the earthquake felt like. And uh, of course, his first question was, was uh, it's something part of the earth that quaked, and he said it was shaking. And he said, in a split second, I realized it was no safe place to go. He said, anything to fall over? I could be the earth could open up and I could explode. I just realized, actually, we don't even live in some solid. We live on something. There's a crust floating on top of very hot liquid. And so that made me, uh, as a doggy, um, come closer to the understanding that the world is to be a very unsafe place. And so, um, the strange thing is that if you uh, meditate on these things, it doesn't make you uh, morbid or negative, but because you have somewhere else to go, you have a vision of reality, which is higher than that, which is a permanent place. It's not a but uh, a permanent place full of uh, light, full of love, and full of pleasure. And that is the uh, Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means anxiety, and Vaikuntha means there is no, where there is none, happened all. So Vaikuntha means that place, there is no anxiety, but being temporary. No anxiety, but being that unfulfilled, and loved. Uh, but that basis, then, how do we know that the place I'm talking about, and the scripture I'm talking about, uh, actually exists at all? We think that, um, you know, sometimes when we base our accusers, we test that we are mad fools, uh, we may, uh, you know, we may not be utterly convinced, uh, we ourselves, that it, it may be an earthquake with our eyes, that the faith is a uh, thing. Um, well, Krishna gives us a glimpse of these things, that's the point. Um, did Krishna made us know the spirit world actually exists? Um, have I seen it? I would say that I've seen glimpses. I would say that I've seen glimpses. I would see, I've seen glimpses of deathlessness. I've seen glimpses of, uh, I say that these things come as gifts, uh, on the path of Krishna consciousness. Such that with just a few little glimpses, uh, they have come to reassurances that there's more to come. And that's what keeps me on the path of Krishna consciousness. So I'm talking about times when the fabric of the material world, the curtain of the material world was pulled away, I was able to see some spirituality. Uh, and then it closes in, of course, because we've been very proud. We think, oh yes, I, now I've uh, become uh, conscious to see. It did take me very long to do it. So it was a very small amount of realization. Uh, and uh, these are meant to be uh, uh, food uh, on our journey, spiritual food uh, on the path of spiritual life. And so um, that one very, very powerful uh, reason why I am uh, still a, a devotee after 30 years, because I have experienced these things. The other thing is that I've seen others who have experienced more than me. Uh, the other factor is that um, I have been given uh, the cumulative literature of thousands of years of great saints. Uh, and of course, not only in the Vedic tradition, but also in the Christian tradition, and the uh, Muslim tradition, and the Buddhist tradition. But everybody says, everybody says, at least one thing that we can again, that there's another world which is better than this one. Where it's Jesus saying, you know, anything in this world, uh, the rust comes in, or the moths come in, they end into our storehouse, uh, and they corrupt it, uh, or thieves come and steal it. Uh, but uh, we shall gain for the place where uh, there is a rust and run of moths and run of feeds and that possession which we will gain will be ours uh, forever. So, um, uh, the Lord said, you know, follow me and we'll take you paradise. So everyone, practically everyone who has uh, an enduring uh, recognition in human history of being a very powerful um, spiritual leader has said exactly the same thing. There is a world on this one and yes, it is worth uh, the uh, fate to get there. So we must be motivated by that, surely. We must think, all right, but then we think, all well, about me. Uh, it's just me, I'm not a saint, I'm not this, I'm not that. Immediately we can do try our own position, but what we must remember is that we are very, very powerful. And we must get in touch with that power. It is not that as a religious person now, I'm weak, or as a spiritual person, I'm so sensitive they can't live in the world. No, spiritual people, religious people, they do great things. Not only do they build great uh, cathedrals, uh, they also have uh, relations which cause them to reach out to their fellow human being and do great things for them. Whether it's uh, opening a hospital uh, in a remote place, whether it's um, you know, making sure that wars uh, stop, uh, whether it's uh, civil rights, it's people who have a sense and notion of uh, spirituality that do look back they're able to do great things, fuel by this, and no one was ambitious for them. In other words, they had truth was burning so inside them that enabled them to uh, do great things. And we have access to that because the soul uh, in the soul of uh, you know, soul of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, the soul of uh, Martin Luther King, or the soul of uh, you know, the great person uh, of recent years you can think of. Uh, in one sense, we, we are sent by the same person. We, uh, we have the same God. And we have sent, we access, we're accessing the same spiritual power. But we must um, allow ourselves, as the devotee says, we must allow ourselves to be placed under the control of Krishna, as a bull uh, is controlled by its owner. So, um, uh, a bull has a ring in his nose, and is pulled by the rope, uh, a rope is pulled by the owner. And so, um, what is the ring I know? Well, it's the Krishna, what is the rope, the guru, uh, and, and what's the owner? That's Krishna. What's the bull? That's us. So, we are owned by some, and we are controlled by some, and we work for someone. And that is uh, Krishna and the saints. So, um, we may think, of course, of oh, a horrible decision. Creep more deaths. What horrible decision to be That I'm owned by someone, and I'm controlled by someone. Well, I'm saying this situation anyway. It is almost like saying, um, uh, well, I don't think I, uh, I um, Controlled uh, by the government, and they have to give the money. 
and I think I did it. A city to have a light burning in my house, I have to pay bills. I seem to be able to talk to my friends, uh, in a part of the country, or indeed in another part of the world. I have to hide from company. What nonsense is this? Um, if you don't actually, uh, if I was driving to Sunday, then I have to go to London, and uh, if I to drive my car into London, I have to pay eight pounds for the fire of here. And uh, then I have to pay another ten pounds if it was to park my car in London. So, um, when the uh, congestion guard first came in, uh, people tried to buy it, as they normally do, because it was something new. They didn't want to raise their money, but they should do something that they'd be doing anyway. Uh, but there were rules, and there were control, and pretty much the road was owned by uh, the government. And so uh, all the cameras were taking the picture, and uh, they eventually had to pay up. So there is a price to be had for doing practically everything. There's a price for driving. We have a road tax, we have insurance, we have a enormous uh, money for the petrol that keeps our car uh, going. Uh, a fraction of the cost of which, of course, is the actual cost of the substance. And um, most of it is uh, our contribution to um, uh, government uh, taxes. And then we have to pay income tax. And we have to pay social security, we have to pay uh, our mortgage. It almost is as if we're already a bull that's uh, prompted by a rope in the nose being controlled by many owners. Our situation is that we're already in that situation. So um, sometimes because we are the kind of critical consciousness, we hear, as one more person, we would be owned and controlled by, and we don't know. I want spiritual life which is free from being controlled and owned by anyone. And certainly, I don't want spiritual life where I have to pay for anything. And so you find that sometimes people don't control consciousness because they think that being controlled and owned by Krishna, they're going to be someone being controlled and owned uh, by government, uh, or um, you know, any other government body which is a uh, bank, or any other body which is extracting funds from us, and thereby deleting our potential for future enjoyment. If I give my need these, will I now need to send myself? Um, well, uh, consciousness is not like that, of course, because in one sense there is no money, but in another sense there is, because you have to spend money on uh, making certain choices of diet, which may cost slightly more or slightly less, I think. Um, you have to uh, come to the point where, in one sense, you are you're surrendering, giving over to another the power of making certain choices for you. Um, you're saying, um, uh, from today, uh, I am own control by this person, I'm going to allow my life to be influenced by his direction. This is what it means to be a devotee. I'm going to see this world not being mine by right. But if I do want to enjoy it, I'm going to have to pay a price. So we want to enjoy nice food, but the price is they offer it. Uh, we want to enjoy our families, but the price is that we see that they have been given to us by Krishna, and therefore uh, there's a duty uh, to uh, give them back to Krishna. So in this way we see that Krishna owns everything, controls everything, and therefore uh, he should also own and control me. The benefit of this is that you know to give Krishna problems. Uh, the benefit of um, uh, paying government is that you can rest easy um, that uh, there's going to be a road uh, in the morning uh, which will take you to work. That there's going to be a national health service. There is going to be a national health service uh, that will help us should we get uh, sick. Uh, in other words, that no one will be treatment if we will make our contribution. So the benefits of belonging to Krishna government, if I can allow yourself to be owned and controlled by him, is that you get benefit, you get a reward, you get protection, you get enjoyment, you actually get freedom. With others, you, you get some freedom, but ultimately, national health service cannot protect you from death, uh, the government cannot protect you from a car crash, or, or um, uh, some of the things that will come, uh, even on the uh, services they provide. Um, but with Krishna, we have the ultimate protection. If we do devotional service of Krishna in this life, at the end of this life, we will not be the losers. We won't lose anything. We can only gain. And you would be surprised if I told you, um, I can't say you just don't know, but I did know, you would be surprised at how much devotional service you've actually done, and how appreciative Krishna already is, and how you are being rewarded, have been rewarded, and will continue to be rewarded by Krishna for daily expressions of devotion. Um, there is that situation. And we have a, uh, you know, we, we have a situation where we are already ready to Krishna, and all Krishna is doing is saying, but just to understand that the situation, anyway, it's a situation. Don't like the person who um, is the junior anarchist that we find sometimes protest marches. Oh, I don't believe in government, I don't believe we have to. Uh, but then it comes time for him to uh, go to the uh, dentist, and he wants national health service dentist, or he gets sick, and he has to go to the hospital with no choice. So he protests that he's an anarchist, and there's been all this rush of paying taxes to government, but then he goes and uses facilities afterwards. So don't be like that. Um, but Krishna actually is the provider of sunshine. Krishna is the provider of water. Krishna is the ultimate provider of food. Not to scuttle dangerous or wetter or any of these other people, or even farmers. But Krishna has uh, created vegetables that live a life. Krishna has created both senses where my plants can take energy from the sun and we can uh, transform that into nourishment for ourselves. So, as, as creatures, we are living off uh, as sunshine, if you like, transformation of sunshine and transformation of earth and water. What wonderful things we created by Krishna. So, we need to pay taxes for that. We also need to take Krishna. Um, I'm, I'm not going to pretend anymore that I'm not part of your uh, setup, that you are not the eternal uh, government of the world. I'm going to pay my taxes. And here's my tax. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Now, my daughter, Krishna, I may not be able to pay it. Um, uh, every day to um, uh, up a certain level, but I'm going to um, have a standing order and I'm going to make a contribution every single day to you in some way. And Krishna's, Krishna will reciprocate the little of your, uh, you, you will get what you pay for. As Krishna's the deep, he will never cheat us. You will get uh, everything. And you know, uh, things that are a little bit devotion, Krishna gives uh, an option of uh, reward. This is the thing. Make a little bit of time for you to begin to experience that experience that you will. Um, everything, there is a plan for everything in the world. There's a plan for everything in the world. Pull the mess up, the plan. Just on Sunday, uh, people were, um, there were, uh, because of course, the, uh, uh, you know, there was a recent story of Shimbo the Bull, uh, and uh, the news, of course, people trying to understand what it was all about. 
And so uh, they were coming to us, and they were saying, um, it's a bonus march for a jumbo bowl. There's nothing to do with that. And uh, I was, was we didn't not exactly know, but we, we just ended up some principles of uh, care for uh, bulls and other sacred animals. And uh, I've read about this in my Vajna voice, blocks, people to do with our class and beauties thing there. Uh, the basic people can't understand there's a symbiotic relationship between man and animals. And uh, I was thinking about this, that bull, uh, the rope through his nose, uh, this kind of, um, you know, sort of like, let's just sort of make it. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, we do not believe that a particular point in the relationship evolved. We say that um, since time immemorial, there has been a relationship between um, uh, 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 human beings and animals. But that does not include uh, eating animals, but it does include uh, having them do things that we cannot do. We cannot process, um, we can't process grass and turn it into uh, milk. Uh, but there is an animal who can. By taking the services of that animal, we can uh, avail ourselves of a very interesting food, but don't kill the animal. And don't kill the animal when um, they can no longer give uh, milk. This is the point. Um, or a bang, uh, you know, anyway, so the point here is that there is a symbiotic relationship. And um, there's a symbiosis between us and uh, trees. Uh, don't kill trees if you don't have to. Uh, but in uh, my civilization, I will say, in uh, the Zevak Kinto, it was the my civilization, we always begin with uh, killing trees, killing cows, then we kill um, the elderly, and we kill women, and we kill children. This is how it progresses. Uh, that uh, demons who are in charge of a uh, world, which I think that they are the owners and the drawers, uh, will motivate by greed. And uh, frustration and anger can't come in. They come as corollaries of, uh, of um, these things, uh, of greed. Because you know how not to be frustrated because you should express the frustration, you become angry. So greed breathes like big brother. And the little sisters are uh, uh, frustration and uh, anger and uh, like that. So um, in, that situation, in that situation, we have uh, you know a cycle in which people commit sin. And uh, they will, uh, the sin will do two things. One is that it will uh, pull the world. It will destroy any final sentiment of human being. It will destroy the society which you live. That's one thing that going against the natural order. We're just talking about natural orders of the universe here. We aren't talking about some arbitrary, uh, fundamentalist religious rules. We're just talking about laws of nature. But there's some laws of nature that we've discovered, and some laws of nature have yet to be discovered. Ones have yet to be discovered found uh, invaders. And so, the uh, law of nature says if you have a demon in control of society, there will be the bitterness, there will be anger, the frustration, there will be envy. There will be these six qualities of manners. And that people's lives will be destroyed. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's strange to see. Uh, uh, Gordon Brown and uh, George Bush come together at the American Summit and try to decide to do something about uh, Darfur. Of course, in one way, you know, we have, we have created situations of very pain uh, these countries. Uh, and uh, it's very good that somebody somewhere starts you know, coming together to do something about this uh, situation that's developed there. But inversely, uh, by the same token, reading this thing of one, you're also creating this thing of others at the same time. So uh, only by a Christian conscious principle can we actually uh, you know, understand uh, how to work within the world and uh, not create for a sin. Otherwise, it comes to the bull carpet. You know, sometimes you get bell and company and you, you press on one and it pops up and bells. This is a material you try to put a material solution to a problem which is actually a spiritual problem manifests as a material problem. We have a spiritual problem. You know, that's the material world. It's a, a spiritual problem which appears to be a material problem. So we try to solve material problems with material solutions and they pop up in the basis. Whereas a spiritual solution is to increase the level of God consciousness, the level of spirituality in the world, so people will naturally have good character. And this is the thing. You may have so many good rules, you may have so many good religious scriptures, but if people do not have good character, they have the mentality of demons. Even they can use scripture to open people up. Even they can use scripture to do bad things. You know? And so you have to have people who can. And uh, one of the things that uh, demonic forces in society do is to kill children. You kill children by uh, removing their childhood, removing their innocence. Uh, they're called adults, but want to make any uh, from children. So we see big problems where child is being removed, innocence is being removed uh, through uh, a variety of means we will go into here. But everybody is becoming uh, affected. Yes, there's a bit of doom and gloom in my class because um, I say coming to us uh, on Sunday, they were saying, uh, they see a devotee on television, they say, uh, it was a sacred bowl, do you believe in being sacred bowl? And my reply was, uh, it's not that. Um, you know, this bull uh, was sacred. This Shumba bull was sacred because the Hindu monks had to describe him to be. They designated him sacred, and therefore he was. It is not that he's sacred because he was in temple. He's sacred because everybody is sacred. He's sacred because every cow is sacred. And he's sacred because every squirrel, and every dog, every cat is sacred. Why? Because it's part of the divine uh, uh, person in each and every living being. Of course, those animals which have been specifically contributed to our alpha, we see them in manifestations of Krishna's kindness and evil. We see that uh, Krishna, in other sense, uh, lives uh, within the life and service of that particular animal. Uh, but we don't see that animal as a god. We don't see an animal. When we say the word sacred, it is slightly different in its Christian sense, which means one thing. Because we say there is God, and there is the Shakti uh, of God. Uh, whereas in Christianity, the word sacred only applies to God himself. So we don't become confused, but sometimes um, people become confused. They think, oh, the cow is sacred, therefore the cow is worship, therefore the cow is God. Or the tree is God. Like that. So we have to see everything in relationship uh, to Krishna, as Krishna explains it to us. But the point here is that, uh, why is there so much uh, sickness amongst cows and bulls? Maybe it's got something to do with how many chemicals we continue to pump into them that destroy the natural unity they have to diseases like uh, teeth. Maybe they can't fight disease because antibiotics and hormones and chemicals uh, present in their feed and the injections that they get. It's 
ultimately uh, making them uh, uh, not immune, but breaking down the uh, immunity because they're struggling so much. So once you start to interfere with natural order, you get um, permutations, uh, and you get further permutations until you come to a situation which is absolutely uncontrollable. And that uncontrollable situation, even devotees of Krishna who read the same constantly, become bewildered how you could ever have a world, ever have culture, where uh, it is possible to have uh, a symbiotic relationship between a house and a man. Uh, but it is possible. Uh, and it is recommended. And um, how would you agree to? Um, we don't have to keep help, we do have to be aware of this plan for uh, human society. And our part in the plan is to try to help along a little bit, but the first thing we do is make sure we are part of the plan. And make sure we're part of the plan, make sure that we're doing everything in our power to say to Krishna, um, I want your protection, I want your, um, I want to be owned and controlled by you. Uh, you even say to Krishna, actually, my dear Krishna, um, I don't really want to be owned and controlled by you, um, but I've heard that's the good thing to do, I've heard that was I recommend, and intellectually accept it. I don't really want it, um, but I'm going to do it anyway, uh, and I'll make a video. And uh, if you want to, please give me some sign that uh, I'm on my track. And if that's the highest level of prayer that you come up with, that's, that's fine. A good list for John Krishna that you're, uh, you know, you have some uh, witness that you have attachments. Um, and give those to Krishna. Krishna, very attached to A, B, C, D, very attached to these things. Please help me to see that those attachments are actually holding me back. They're not contributing to my pleasure, but they hold me back from the pleasure that you say is available. I surrender to you. And that's a good prayer. It's a prayer I have. And uh, very quickly, you'll gain yourselves uh, from the prayer. So, in this verse, we have Swami Vamana. He's advising uh, Dhruvamar. He's saying, oh, don't, you don't need to kill these people. One of them killed your brother. That's a fact. But you don't have to kill every single one in order to uh, avenge his life. Ultimately, you're not meant to kill him. You're a king, meant to know these things. And besides, these criminal law, he only controls everything. So, don't try to do his business. Um, you know, he will do his business. You don't try to become God by killing everybody. God is death. You know, that, that happens anyway. So, stop fighting. Come, come home. So, this is what's going on in service. And you try and point out that there are natural uh, order things. That's what we're trying to do uh, in this session. Which ended. My time is up. Uh, just we are controlling by the Lord, and just as the Lord is in here for almost eternal time, we have come to that time, and it's come time to uh, uh, say my farewells. I see you next time. Sarn does this. That's nice to hear. What are that was, Arvind? Yes. <laughs> it's all nice to hear, right? Yes. Um, all right. Very good. Thank you, Lynn. I've got a happy to you on Sunday. Uh, happy that you came along and introduced yourself so I could know, um, know who you are and who out there saying. And uh, I wish I could talk to you more, but of course, uh, I think we have about um, 10,000 plates of uh, Prashadam, 10,000 plates of Prashadam in the Trafalgar Square on Monday. So uh, there's 10,000 plates of Prashadam, and most of the Cossacks were devotees. Well, there was a lot of there as well. And um, it was just so, so busy. Um, but, um, you know, this is, our, this is our quiet time every day. This is a well kept secret, actually. And you didn't want me to tell many people. You want it to be. Those that, those that deserve to get into this uh, online class, they will find out about it. Because we know what happened. We were heavily advertised. We would swim. And um, so, not, not really putting on advertising. All right, thank you all for um, coming. I hope I did something that works some a little value. All right, I will see you guys soon. And uh, I will see you, some of you, at the uh, Rough Adra on Sunday. In the How wonderful. Please do come and choose yourself. All right, thanks, Nick. All goes to the ground.